Hey, it's Mark from Republic Training. You may notice I'm in a different environment here. Uh, we have no power in Marin County. A bunch of fires burning in California, both Southern California and Northern California, and we've had power shut off in order to avoid more fires. So I'm actually in downtown San Francisco right now at the iconic Sentinel Building, home of Francis Ford Coppola's American Zoetrope Company, and where Apocalypse Now was cut among many other films. Francis actually cut the ending of it himself at the top of the building that you see right here. So let's talk about Da Vinci Resolve. You may notice that we cover both Da Vinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro 10 on this channel because we find they complement each other really well. Which you use really determines on your own workflow and needs, but we really enjoy the incredibly powerful tool set, especially when it comes to grading in Da Vinci Resolve, which is why it's been used for so many feature films and TV shows. From our perspective, Resolve has the most mature feature set when it comes to color grading because it's been around for years with tons of development behind it and it's been used in tons of films and TV shows. So we find it a great complement to Final Cut Pro 10 and we find it extremely useful to know how to use it whether you're using Final Cut Pro 10 in conjunction with Resolve or using Resolve for everything. So we think Resolve is an important tool to learn how to master. In today's tip, I'm going to show you how to match two shots using custom curves. I want to match this first shot to the second shot. Now when using the RGB parade to match shots to each other, the goal is not necessarily to make the traces of each channel exactly match each other. That's usually impossible because there are different elements in the scene. Rather, the goal is to analyze and replicate the relationships between each of the channels. So with that being said, let's look at our first clip, the one we want to correct. It has bunched traces down in the shadows, represented mostly of the ground here, just about touching zero, up to about 256. Then there's a gap of no luminance values in these low midtones. Then we have good distribution of luminance in the midtones to the highlights, although the blues are elevated with very little blue in the midtones here. Let's compare this to the shot we're matching to, the second shot. Here, our shadows are more compressed than the first shot not quite to zero and up to about 128 or 130. And we have more expanded mid-tones versus the first shot. Especially the red channel that spread out quite a bit more. The green and the blue channels are a little more compressed, the blue a little bit more than the green. So if we want to match the first shot to the second shot, we want to do something similar with these relationships. Have more bunched up shadow detail at the bottom, and have more of a staggered relationship between the red, green, and blue channels up top with more spread in the red than the green and the blue. Now previously we grabbed a still of the shot we wanted to match to, but we can create a reference without even grabbing a still. To get started, let's select the first clip. Let's add a node with Option or Alt S, press the Tab key, our new shortcut, and name it. Next, I'll right-click on the second shot and choose Wipe Timeline Clip. Doing so engages the image wipe with this timeline clip with no need to grab a still first. We saw earlier that Option or Alt W will allow you to swap the wipe, but you can also toggle the wipe off and on with Command or Control W. As opposed to the tractor shot, we don't need any resizing here because the shots are very similar in their composition. Rather than using the primary bars, this time we we'll use custom curves. With the red curve isolated, my first goal is to compress the shadows to match the first shot. I'll shift click to add a point down near the shadows and pull down. Notice as I'm pulling down that the other channels are moving at the same time. The reason this is happening is because by default, Resolve is maintaining luminance as I make adjustments. In other words, it's adjusting the other color channels to keep the brightness level the same. This is often what a colorist wants, so you can focus on adjusting color without making changes to luminance, but in this case, it gets in the way. I'm gonna right click on that control point to delete it. And then I'm gonna go to the primaries wheels and change the luma mix from the default of 100 down to zero. Now when I go back to my curve, shift click to add a point and pull down, notice that just the red channel traces are moving and the green and blue channels stay still. 
and I'll attempt to compress those shadows about the same as our reference shot. By the way, you can set the Luma Mix to default at zero. I'll press Shift 9 to go to Project Settings. In the General Options under Color, you can click this checkbox to default the Luminous Mixer to zero. I'll cancel that. Now I'll repeat this process with the green channel. I'll isolate it, shift click to add a point, and pull down. And with the blue channel, I'll do the same thing. I've been able to compress these shadow traces to match the compression of our reference shot, but they're all a little lower. So I'm gonna go to the primaries wheels to the offset and drag in the master wheel just to bump those up a little bit. and then tweak them to bring them down a little bit more. I'm also keeping my eye on the viewer to try to match the color as best I can. And I'll toggle the work so far off and on with Command or Control D. Now the ground in both shots matches much better in both color and luminance. Now to match the sky, we see a huge difference in the sky. There's a lot more cyan in our reference shot. Cyan is a complementary color to red. So if we remove red, we should add cyan. And that matches what we're trying to do in the traces here. We've got red in the highlights that we don't have in our reference shot. So I'll isolate red, and I'll select the top control point and pull down. And we begin to introduce more cyan into the highlights. The clouds themselves are also cyan, and that's darker. So I'll add another control point by shift clicking so I don't move the curve, somewhere in the mids and pull down there as well. I'm starting to affect the color of the ground, so I'll add another point closer to the shadows and push up a bit. I'll make sure my image wipe is selected and drag between those. Command or Control D to toggle that correction on and off and we've managed to get quite close to the shot on the left. Another way to compare shots rather than wiping between them is to see both shots in their entirety in the viewer. I'll turn off the wipe. I'll shift click to select both these shots. Then in the viewer, I'll right click and choose split screen, selected clips. This way I can see all of each clip at the same time. Any clip that is selected reveals the nodes for that clip. So you continue to make adjustments while looking at both clips at the same time. This week, I'm releasing my advanced color grading tutorial in DaVinci Resolve, which has been fully updated for version 16. And it's the only tutorial that is certified by Blackmagic for taking the exam. You can get it for 40% off this week with a code below and it includes all the media for following along. So check it out and thanks for watching.